Wrapping up here, our final 10, 15 minutes or so on Take Command. I don't know how much longer it's going to be, Logan, because we haven't done this yet. That's how yeah. that's how time works. Exciting. Exactly. You don't know. We're not we're not on a clock. We're not in <laughs> overtime. We're in the fourth quarter. I guess we kind of are in overtime in a way. We don't know how much time is left. <laughs> By the way, speaking of the rules thing, that was a question I did have. I, I knew the new rules, but as that we got near the end of the first overtime, I did not know in uh, whether or not it was like that was the end of the first quarter or like, hey, does Kansas City need to score before time That's expired? What I thought, yeah, I was like, is the, they need to score a touchdown right here? Like, what's Like, happening? do they need to get going? Like, yeah, what's going like, on? It was but really they, weird to watch, yeah. Yeah, so uh, luckily, Gene Steratore on the broadcast did say, like, no, this is this is the first quarter. Because um, otherwise, I guess you would have had a two-minute warning. Um, so that, that oh, makes sense as well. Um, but there you go. We all learned something, even if some of us learned more than others. Okay, uh, Commanders have made a couple of hires since we last met, including one this morning, Bobby Johnson, uh, now the offensive line coach for Cliff Kingsbury and Dan Quinn. Uh, last couple of years, he's been the Giants O-line coach. I don't think the job he did in New York is why he's getting this job because uh, it has not been a pretty couple of years for the Giants offensive line. But uh, he's had some, he's had some other good results, yes. good stops, and uh, you know I think there's also a tape study to be done here that I know yes. we haven't had the chance to do yet where we go, okay, are th is this well designed and poorly executed, or do we have real questions about the hire that just got made? Yeah, and I, and I will say this though, like to to Bobby's maybe credit, and I've got to watch more film, obviously, of what's happening here. But just thinking back, like they do do a good job of like marrying run and pass concepts together from a formation standpoint. That's you know the offensive line coach. Obviously, they're coaching technical elements, but there's a huge tactical element to that job in terms of what runs do we like, you know, what are our best protections. I think from a run game standpoint, you see some some good stuff. You see guys that are well coached. Obviously, Saqu Saquon Barkley has had some explosive runs over his time in New York that we they're very we're very familiar with here in Washington. So I just want to point that out. Like I know that hire seems like oh no, that's tough. Like what's happening? But there are more layers to what that position does. And I also want to say like he's had a front row seat to see how to insulate an offensive line. I think New York because they have a bad one does a really good job of like calling plays, designing a game plan around insulating that group. So I think having that level of experience could potentially be very helpful. But again, so don't look at this as like on the surface and go like, oh my gosh, this is terrible. There are many layers to this position and hopefully like he's really good at these other elements and hopefully like, um, you know, maybe he just didn't have the right group of five guys up there in New York, and this is the right one for him. So Yeah, and so we'll do some more tape study and yep, dive into absolutely. this deeper uh, probably next week. But I will also say, like, on the resume, even these last couple of years, like, Andrew Thomas was a second-team all-pro two years yep. ago. Um, so, like, young player development, got got a pretty good notch in his belt on that one. So uh, we'll see. I, I think, to me, the bigger concern, and again, this is a concern. This is not a death sentence. This is me... Uh, expressing out loud just thoughts. Just being honest, man. Just yeah. being honest, right? We're just talking yeah. through some just, stuff. We're just, we're just talking. Just a couple of guys talking. This guy's ball. not falling yet. We're just talking no. stuff. No, it's February. This guy can't fall. Uh, not <laughs> at least until, uh, until September. Um, <laughs> but I, I think that the concern that I have um, is exactly mirrored in excitement on the other side of the ball. So on defense, Dan Quinn has hired Joe Witt. Joe Witt's hired some folks, Jason Simmons, yeah. uh, who they've all worked together before. They come from the same school, school of thought. Um, they have personal and professional familiarity. And that's exciting to me. Like, let's get not like not in the way that Ron Rivera did, where it's like, let's just get the gang that didn't work, get back together. Like these are guys that have worked together in successful situations. Let's get the continuity right. of success, right? As opposed to what happened, the ultimate bad example, I've used this a bunch of times on on this show and, and the radio show, is like what happened in Carolina. I think Frank Reich and Thomas Brown and uh, you know all those guys that got there, there's a lot of good coaches that were offensively in the room last year for Carolina. They hadn't worked together before, and they didn't work together last year. They were That was a bad group. Yeah. And so I see Cliff hire, you know, or keeps Tavita Pritchard. I think yeah. Tavita was pretty well reviewed, uh, seemed to be very sought after, seems to be a good coach. Um, obviously, I think there's some questions about what happened last year, but how much of that was Biennemi, how much of that was Tavita, how much of that was you know, other people, whatever. Yeah. Tavita seems to be a good coach. Um, I think we think Cliff offensively is a good coach. Uh, Bobby Johnson, O-line, like, but it's a bunch of guys that got to come Brian together. Johnson, they got to, they got to come together. And I think that that can be done. And I think there are some similarities in how these coaches have coached in some various places. But I think one of the reasons that 
the offense did not go as well as BNB wanted last year was a lack of cohesiveness sure. on staff. Now, he didn't get to pick any of those guys. Cliff at least is picking these guys. But it does give – it is something that has to happen. I'll put it that way. No, I, I 100% agree. And I think because like, it's like any kind of professional environment, right? You want to be friends or have a, have a functioning working relationship with your coworkers, right? Like if we didn't like each other, this podcast wouldn't be very good, right? Because you're going to be able to talk through some stuff. And I think that's what you're looking at here. It's like you're getting guys together that I think are – that have good resumes in their own right. But it's like how do they come together? How do they gel? <clears throat> much in the same way when you bring in players to a new locker room, like how do they gel? If you bring the wrong piece and it doesn't work. So I think you bring up a great point about the defense. I think there's a lot to be excited about there, specifically in the back end. You know, like I'm really excited for the secondary. I think all of the, all of their experience, all of their, their kind of key data points on, along the resume is fantastic. But like you said, offensively, they've got some stuff that they got to talk through. They got to work through. And um, you know, we won't have any kind of definitive information on that until we get later in the process. So. Yeah, and I know you guys are talking to Cliff, uh, hopefully tomorrow. tomorrow. Tomorrow or Wednesday, uh, we'll see. Yep. Yeah, so Command Center should have a, a good interview. I would also recommend um, a couple of years ago during the pandemic, I might have mentioned this on the last show, but uh, a couple of years ago during the pandemic, uh, Sean McVay, I guess, was bored. Uh, so he and Peter Schrager right. did a podcast. Um, and so Cliff was a guest, guest on that podcast. And I thought I thought there was some interesting stuff in that pod about for like for Cliff, talking about how it was a struggle at times to find the time to be in command of the offense because you have to be the head coach first. Like you have to kind of mix and match your, your time. And he gets in at 4 a.m. and watches the tape and it's the only time he can kind of get to himself and he better be done by seven because then he's got to get ready for the team meeting at eight. Like right. that's just the reality. And so now him as an OC, and it, it's kind of funny too, seeing some of the stuff that went around, like even last night after Mahomes wins, there was this great uh, list of Mahomes and his losses at Texas Tech under Cliff. And the stats are insane. Like he averaged in his losses, 389 yards and three touchdowns. Wow. Average. That's incredible. Yeah. Average. And it's like, well, it seems to me like the defense was the problem. So maybe this <laughs> Cliff only has to coach the offense thing might actually work out. But I do think, again, like the cohesiveness between he, Brian Johnson, Tavita Pritchard, and like making sure everyone is clear on their roles. I'm, I'm curious, like in your experience, have you been a part of staffs where there wasn't that cohesion? And then obviously, like I think most famously, that 2012 staff was very on the same page, or at least by the time the information got to you guys as a team right. was, was on the same page. Yeah, I think, you know, there, every staff that I've been a part of, especially when it's not going well, like one that sticks out to me is like Chicago, like just guys that had kind of come from different areas, different backgrounds, different coaching trees. They all had, you know, they're all very smart guys, but they're all like, this is the way we're going to solve this problem. And that just didn't jive, just didn't lead, lead to a productive offense. And I think, you know, we had a young offensive coordinator at the time. Dal Loggins, a guy who I think is really smart. He's now the OC uh, for South Carolina. So good job, Dal, back in the saddle. But um, you know, young guy and some older coaches underneath him that had a very strong perspective, a couple that were kind of on the way out, just kind of wrangling all those cats. I think, like you said, like you talked about the film element of being an offensive coordinator. I think there's a leadership element there, too. Like this is the direction we want to go. And I think about Sean, I think about Kyle, um, you know, in both both San Francisco here. And then when uh, Sean obviously was the OC and then even when I was in Houston and like Bill O'Brien's the head coach and there's the OC like there was a very clear vision for everybody, right? And I think there's that's kind of what that that offensive coordinator position needs to encapsulate. And I hopefully Cliff, because he's got the more time now, can kind of get that done and get everybody on the same page. And this is part of building the staff, right? And I think you hire these guys because you've got pre-existing relations with them and you believe in what they do. And I think ultimately, like, we'll have to see what happens. But, you know, uh, that's definitely something to keep an eye on. Yeah, Johnson's the one that's interesting to me, like, because – if you're keeping Pritchard, Johnson was a QB coach. Then he was an OC in Philly and he's got so much experience coaching quarterbacks. Like he, he was with Dak. Um, obviously he's been with Jalen. He's known Jalen since Jalen was six years old oh, wow. uh, because Brian's, uh, Brian, when he was a, a high school player was coached by Jalen's dad before oh, wow. going to Utah, uh, and having a pretty good career as a player there. So like, what is, what is his role? Like, what is his position? Like, what is his versus what is Tavita's? Obviously Cliff is a former quarterback. Like how involved is he there and whoever this young guy is. And just as long as there aren't too many cooks in the kitchen, um, I think it can work. One thing that I do appreciate is these, this seems to be a pretty young staff. Um, yeah. maybe Bobby Johnson's, I mean, Bobby Johnson's definitely a little bit older than the rest of these guys. He's been coaching for 14 years. He's the O-line coach, but, um, 
I, that is something that I've seen before. You know, I, when, when Kevin was the OC and Bill Callahan was on staff, like they butted heads because Bill thought he knew better at all times. And at times he may have been right. right. Um, but there's, and Kevin was ultimately the OC and obviously Jay was the head coach. And then all of a sudden Bill was the head coach in that final year in 2019. And that was, uh, it was not always pretty, uh, all the time. So, that that is a dynamic both in professional like you know one thing i like about brian johnson coming with cliff is like brian's played in a lot of uh like or he's a guy that uses a lot of spread stuff yeah so like similar personnel groupings but maybe some different ideas of how to deploy them like that could be really exciting yeah but how do they get along like personally professionally if you will not not do they go hang out and have dinner but like how do they interact as human beings in the building how do they respect each other? How is that information and those relationships presented to the players? And that's the same as in any corporate structure, but that stuff becomes obviously really important. And I think on the defensive side, because the familiarity, you're not gonna have to worry about any of that stuff. Yeah, totally agree. And I think uh, the other thing I, you know, you mentioned like who, who gets what responsibilities when it comes to Tavita, uh, Ben Johnson and Brian Johnson, uh, Brian Johnson, excuse me. And then Cliff, I think, you know, one thing that you're seeing more and more with offensive staffs is you're seeing a run game coordinator and you're seeing a pass game coordinator. And that's just because, and I think you bring in that guy like Brian Johnson because he's got that ability to do that for you. Right. And it just helps streamline the process a little bit. You know, Kyle had a run game coordinator a long time for San Fran. I think Sean had a pass game guy. I think it might've been O'Connell when he was there. Like yeah. it's, it's a valuable tool. So just getting guys who know offense, who've got that background, is extremely important. And I think, um, you know, we'll see how it all settles in, like you said, but I, I don't think it's, it's not a reason to be alarmed that there's these guys with kind of similar skill sets. Cause I think you just, as long as you give them clearly defined roles and give them responsibilities, I think you want guys that are, that are smart, that see things to get, like see things in a similar way and can come to, uh, easy solutions. No doubt. All right. So, uh, I would say the Thursday show, I think it'll be the Thursday show later in the week show, whatever shows the next one, uh, we will reflect, uh, Logan, maybe give us some insight on the interviews with cliff and, uh, uh, Cliff and Joe Witt, uh, assuming that you guys get those guys on command center, get a chance to talk to them. Uh, but I do think the bulk of that episode will be a mock draft. We promise you mock draft 1.0. So take a man mock draft 1.0. Let's see where we are before we head into the combine in a couple of weeks. Uh, so plenty of draft coverage between now and the end of, uh, or I guess the end of draft season, the draft, uh, also free agency primer needs to happen soon because free agency at this point is now like three weeks away which is nuts uh if you like this episode uh and you're not subscribed yet do do that uh subscribe wherever it is you're watching or listening right now and we will see you later in the week for a mock draft yup it's time on take command thanks for watching this clip of take command first why don't you why don't you like it it lets other people know that it was good and then they should watch it too. And Logan, we have a new exclusive home for full episodes. We do. 1067, the fans YouTube page. Go check it out and please subscribe. Yeah, do, do what Logan said. Do He's it. Very, very smart. <laughs>